hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and in this video we're going to take a closer look at the Packard Bell Force 102 CD desktop computer, which we unboxed in last week's video. Now this computer um, is interesting in a few ways. One, it's the oldest Packard Bell that I've ever owned. This was manufactured November 30th of 1994. This was um, about three days after my fifth birthday. My favorite birthday, by the way. I don't know why that would matter to you guys, but there you go. I just said it. <laughs> now, when we um, unboxed this computer, it was in full working condition. Um, by some miracle, the Dallas clock chip that was um, in this computer still worked. And as of right now, it's still working. It had a 540 meg hard drive, 8 megabytes of memory, which was um, built onto the motherboard itself. And it was um, running Windows 95, which had been upgraded from Windows 3.1. So, um, since that video, off camera, I have made a few little upgrades to this computer. Well, first of all, you can't really see it, but um, I took a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and just... Uh, got rid of most, if not all, the uh, scuff marks on the case. I upgraded the memory from 8 megabytes to 16 megabytes, and I replaced the 540 meg hard drive with this front-mounted CF card um, adapter, which came in this Packard Bell Platinum Pro 22 that I got a couple months ago. I just transferred it over to this computer and it's working great. CF card I'm using in it right now is a 2 gig card, which is quite a nice upgrade from the original 540 meg hard drive. Now let's see if I can get it back in there. There we go. It's um, running Windows for Workgroups 3.11. This computer would probably run Windows 95 with no trouble at all, but you know, um, this computer originally came with Windows 3.1, and I've got this Packard Bell up here running. Windows 95, so really no point in this computer running 95 as well. And by the way, this is KVM'd together with this computer. Also, this computer has a 90 megahertz Pentium so um, Socket 5 that's still original to this computer. And I also, um, when I upgraded the, from the hard drive to the CF card, I copied the um, the uh, master boot record over. So we have the uh, system credentials and the format number making this computer um, keep its original um, format number. Not really necessary, but it is nice to have. So, um, let's go ahead and power it up, shall we? All right. As you can see, the case is quite a bit yellowed. Um, hopefully I can give it a good retro bright this summer. And let's see if we can get into um, the BIOS. See, it's still keeping the date and time just fine, despite it being a nearly 25-year-old Dallas clock chip. I know it's probably on borrowed time, so hopefully um, I can get a little bit of time out of it. Um, pun no pun intended there. <laughs> and I apologize for the refresh rate, but we won't be in the BIOS too long. So you've got a 90 megahertz Pentium. Once again, I want to thank my good friend, um, YouTube user Mr831, um, for kindly donating this computer to me. This came from that very famous um, computer junk store that was famous amongst uh, vintage computer collectors for a short time. Booting into Windows for work groups. Um, I replaced the old um, ISA network card with a PCI 3COM card, which is um, quite a bit more compatible. So this does have network and internet access, which is really cool. Don't know why it stretches the wallpaper out like that when it boots up, but it should go back to normal in a second. And there we go. And here's our program manager. Okay, um, let's dive into the Windows install. First of all, let's check out the system credentials, which I copied over from the original hard drive. 
See the Force 102 CD hard drive format, format number is 555500. I restored this from a Packard Bell Master CD dated from November 1994, which is the same month this computer was built. So presumably this is um, factory original software. 90 megahertz Pentium, 8 megs of RAM, of course it's um, 16 now. AMI BIOS, got a Cirrus Logic 5430 um, video chip in here, I believe one megabyte of RAM, and the original hard drive 545 megabytes made by Seagate. The original hard drive, um, well I had it sitting around here um, a couple of days ago, but don't know where I put it. <laughs> um, I haven't cleaned um, the hard drive out on it, so um, all the original data is still on there. Again, this computer was originally owned by um, Paradigm Simulations of Texas, who were famous for doing a lot of um, experimental um, 3D work for the Nintendo 64. So it, that's really cool. So test date, November 30th, 1994, 11.18 a.m. And, of course, this has Packard Bell Navigator on here. This is the older version um, from 1994, which um, is one I'm not as familiar with, but it's still pretty cool. It has this cool little opening animation. Welcome to Packard Bell's Navigator. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. So yeah, um, it's a lot more uh, primitive um, compared to the Navigator on the later Packard Bells that we're used to. Just click this button and you have access to your software, like Microsoft Works. This is version 3. Multimedia Edition. I'm not sure um, what it means by Multimedia Edition. But there's Microsoft Works. <laughs> and you get access to Arc Workspace. This was before they had the 3D version. So again, a little bit more archaic. Windows Paintbrush. Head back to Navigator. And Kid Space. Which is not too different from um, what we're used to. Hello and welcome to Kid Space. This is the fun place to work and play. Not really. Got our ski free. <laughs> I love that game and Windows Write. Um, for some reason I have always loved the icon for Windows Write from uh, Windows 3.1 <laughs> and let's head back in the navigator and you also get a uh, semi 3D view like a little hallway which just takes you to these 2D uh, places but yeah navigator that's version 2 I believe and you get your audio station, which is about the same as um, newer Packard Bells that we're used to. And load up some MIDIs, Packard Bell MIDIs. My favorite.
So yeah, um, audio station working great. Got some good sounding MIDI. And this Packard Bell um, came with the 1994-1995 software pack, which I did a video about um, a few months ago on the Legend 204 CD, which also had the same software pack, which um, I have in its original box right here. So we're going to try this out real quick with, um, oh, let's pick one out here. Uh, how about Kid Zoo? By the way, I also replaced the CD-ROM drive on this computer. The original was um, having trouble uh, reading from certain disks, so I just replaced it with a CD-RW drive. The original was connected to the, C to the uh, sound card, but the motherboard also has a secondary IDE interface, which works just fine with CD-ROMs, so you can just plug up any IDE-based CD-ROM to this computer, and it should work just fine. And of course, it drops down into DOS. like I'm watching America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> hey there, welcome to KidZoo. Ready to click on someone your own size? Something tells me um, the people um, that ran the auditions for the voices of this game uh, didn't have too much experience. <laughs> so let's uh... Come on into the baby animal movie theater. Hey! Do you have any popcorn? No! And this is for Elmo 3. I know you love your otters. And the main menu again. And can you Do find you know me? your baby animal name? Try to get all the way to twelve. I am a Joey. Can you find me? I believe that would be You're it. right. I'm a Joey, a baby kangaroo. I am a duckling. You're right. I'm a duckling, a baby duck. I am a kid. Can you find me? Uh, let's see. Oh well, try again. I guess I was wrong. You're right. I'm a kid, a baby goat. Well, well to be fair, that also looked like a, a goat. Puppy. Can you find me? You're right. I'm a puppy. Baby dog. So I'm, I You're made the wrong play? choice on a game intended for three-year-olds. Can you find me? That's pretty. Uh, You're right. Depressing. I'm a fledgling, a baby stork. I am a fawn. Can you find me? You're right. I'm a fawn, a baby deer. I am a foal. Can you find me? Oh well. Okay. Apparently that was wrong. You're right. I'm a foal. A baby horse. I am a kitten. Can you? You're right. I'm a kitten. A baby pretty, cat. Pretty deep voice for a great. kitten. I am a calf. Can you find me? You're right. I'm a calf. A baby cow or bull. I am a lamb. Can you find me? You're right. I'm a lamb. A baby sheep. I am a cub. Can you find me? You're right. I'm a cub, a baby bear. I am a tadpole. Can you find me? You're right. I'm a tadpole, a baby frog. Very exciting, folks. Very exciting. You can just tell from my voice I'm so excited to play this. You really know your baby animal names. Except for two of them, apparently. 
Uh, what is this? Oh, 1994. Okay, let's drop back out. See you soon. Have fun. Get smart. Uh, get smart. Wasn't that a... Wasn't that a spy show um, in the 60s? Anyway, uh, when you, whenever you um, close out of any of these bundled knowledge adventure games on these Packard Bells, you get this cool little menu that gives you access to the rest of the games, or you can just go back into Windows, which is what we're going to do. Okay, going to show another game. Um, this one we have to install. But um, this is a game that I remember getting not long after we got the um, Legend 822 back in uh, 1995. A game I didn't really play a whole lot, but I still have it somehow. This is called uh, Lenny's Multimedia Circus. This is um, supposedly 45 different interactive games and activities for kids. Anyone else remember um, finding, getting old uh, computer games back in the day that had the Kidsoft Select logo on it <laughs> from Good Housekeeping? These were everywhere back then. And here's the back. Um, apparently this features Dave Coulier, um, a.k.a. Joey of TV's Full House, as the voice of Lenny. I've always been a fan of Dave Coulier and especially a fan of Full House, so I definitely approve of that. I've always loved that old uh, Microsoft Windows compatible logo that we, you would find on old software back in the day. And of course all the kids soft select games looked identical with this um, blue CD. So I'll go ahead and pop it in and install it. And we'll see if um, I remember anything about this game. I very vaguely do. And somehow I've been able to keep this game all these years. By the way, I'm using plug-in for Windows, which is why um, the icons here look a little bit different. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay that's fine. Oh yeah, I remember seeing this in um, install programs back in the day. <laughs> okay, from Paramount Interactive apparently. Please read the note on MIDI Mapper and in the information window below. Okay, let's um, check out um, Lenny's Multimedia Circus. I remember that logo. Not sure if I remember it from this game or not, but I remember seeing that. Uh, uh, um, um. <sighs> yeah, that's a bit awkward. Okay. Uh, okay. Why am I even doing this now? This is try number three. <laughs> okay, this does not bode well. Let's see if rebooting fixes it. Okay, rebooting did not fix this problem. Uh, apparently, um, this computer just refuses to outright play this game, which is a shame. I'm going to have to not show this game on camera anytime soon. I will play this off camera on a uh, more compatible computer, so for the time being I'm gonna have to find another game to show on this computer, so give me a moment. Okay, um, I found uh, a game we can play. This is a game I've shown on the channel before, but not too often. Um, 
This is Ezekiel S. Jackson's Amazing Truckology, a game that um, I liked quite a bit growing up from uh, 1996. This is from a time when I was obsessed with construction equipment for some reason. <laughs> but, um, hey, the, the games I got um, involving construction equipment were really good, and I'm glad I still have them. By, uh, this is by Maris Multimedia, distributed by Maxis which is really cool so let's go ahead and pop it in hopefully we'll have better luck with this than the last game I'm a little disappointed um, I was really wanting to try that game out but I can always try it on another computer I suppose and this game I believe is already installed so just have to double click it <laughs> oh man! Yeah, so the point of this game, well there really isn't a point of this game, you just um, get in this truck, drive to different construction sites, and uh, learn about the, the construction equipment. Starting with the farm. Music in this game really takes me back. The Case Axial Flow 2100 Series Combined Harvester. I love that voice, it's so dramatic. I love the music in this game so much. In fact, um, I, I've actually extracted the music from this game before. They're just basically WAV files. I might see if I can upload them somewhere for you guys. The Massey Ferguson 3000 Series Tractor. And uh, occasionally you'll get a little um, cartoon on some of these. The Massey Ferguson 3120 and 3125 tractors are fitted with a computer control system called Datatronic, which not only controls the operation of the tractor, for example, preventing wheel slip, it also has 16 functions to provide the accurate, essential information the operator needs to improve the work rate on a digital readout in the cab. But would Datatronic work without the tractor? To test this, we fitted Ernie, a farmhand, with all the latest in computer equipment to see if it would improve his performance. Ernie will be competing against Zeke in a Massey Ferguson 3120 to plow and seed this field. Are you ready, fellas? Okay! Well, Zeke managed to plow and seed his side of the field in under two hours. How did Ernie get on? Uh, have we started? I was waiting for someone to turn it on. <laughs> well, there we have it. Even with the most sophisticated Datatronics computer circuitry, you still need a tractor to do the job. See you soon, folks. Let's click this. I believe this takes you to some mini-games. Including, um... Which one is the one I'm best at? Oh yeah, the quarry truck game. These games are not very easy, by the way. <laughs> in this game, you got to get just the perfect amount of um, grain into the back of this dump truck so it can make it up this hill. If you have too much, um, it won't make it up the hill, but if you have too little, um, it'll just say, uh, not enough. <laughs> so... Again, you just got to use your best judgment.
Okay, made it up the hill, but was this enough? And it was! I'm honestly surprised. <laughs> Uh, no new game. Let's go to another one. Let's go to the uh, airport fire game. And this is one that I've never been good at. So let's try to figure this out. Apparently we're supposed to put this fire out. Oh, we actually did it! <laughs> Too bad there were 20 casualties, but we put the fire out! <laughs> And this game, um, Drive the Dennis Rapier, I believe that's how it's pronounced. I I was never able to figure out how to even get this game to load in, uh, back in the day. Because this game was, um, based out of DOS, and I could never get it to go. So, uh... Let's see if we can, uh get further than I did um, 20 years ago. The hard drive LED is blinking so it's doing something. Okay, um, this is further than I've ever gotten before, and now the question is, how do I play? Okay. I guess we've got to turn it on, put the truck in gear, I guess. Okay, that just changes the view. Uh, okay, I'm able to turn the steering wheel at least. Uh, well, okay, it did something. I'm going to crash it, aren't I? Okay, I lost my patience with that, so, uh, let's head into DOS and play, uh, a DOS game or two, shall we? Don't have a joystick connected to this computer, but let's switch to the games directory. Let's pick us up, let's pick us out a game to play, uh, let's see, something that it's not too overdone on this channel. There we go. I am back. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I love how his book is, um, why I'm so great. <laughs> so let's dive on in. Episode one. to a rough start. <laughs> it's almost as if these bad guys want to kill me. What a concept. Hold down your fire button for rapid fire. Okay. <laughs> I got the end! Caffeine and sodas provides one unit of health. Oh, good note. So that means Diet Pepsi really is healthy. Don't um, take that as gospel, by the way. Rocket launcher! I'm about to die, by the way. As I said, uh, yes, I did die indeed, and we gotta go all the way back to the beginning. Don't you love games that do that? <sighs> Probably doesn't help that I'm having to play this from an odd angle. Okay, I think this video's gone on long enough. Um, don't want to keep you guys here t too much longer. But that was the Packer Bell Force 102 CD. And by the way, off camera, um, I just happened to uh, find the original hard drive from this computer. It's a Seagate ST360A. Let's see the format number on there. So yeah, only 545 megabytes, but we're now on uh, two gigs now, so um, that is really, really nice. So, again, very nice computer. Still needs to be retro brighted, but hopefully this computer should give me um, enjoyment for the um, next few years. But until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.